I've already loosened a couple of these things, but basically what you need to do is take your wrench and loosen this top nut, take the pressure off that spring. There's two sizes of Allen key, use your bigger one. Loosen that guy, keep it there. Then run around and take all of these out. This top piece comes off, all the little screws and washers come out, set them to the side. Now we can set this to the side. So inside here, these are the pieces. Okay, so I brought you guys over to the bench for a second because this is the old one with the spring. It sits on there, nice tight flush, whatever. This is the Aeromotive one doesn't quite sit in there right. There's a little bit of a gap. So I'm going to do the right thing here and literally just take a file and massage this open a little bit until it sits on there properly. So uh, I'll get back to you on that. Okay, I filed it just enough where it just kind of snaps on there tight. Um, probably would be easier to work on the softer material rather than the hardened one, but um, too late for that. We already did it this way, so this will work. Okay, so I didn't film it because it's not that important, but we put some Teflon on that little guy just in case it's leaking from there. I don't think it was. And that's all together. Just lay that right on top of there. Pulse line up, pushes down. Great. All right, put the screws back in. All right, there we go. Those are tightened down. New pliers in place. So, at this point, I think we might as well shorten that vacuum line because uh, it doesn't need to be that long. So we'll do that. And we'll set some pressure to this thing. Let's do that first because there's no way that's enough pressure set on this guy right now. Screw that back down. Um, if I remember right, that amount of threads looks about right for the poundage that we were running. So let's just give it that much for now. Just kind of work them both down at the same time. This is a way too big a wrench for this, but... Uh, it's the right wrench because it's the one that I have. Okay, so I just kind of snug that down. Yeah, you can actually see the O-ring come out around there. So yeah, I'm not real confident in that O-ring anymore. But oh well, we've come this far, so let's see what happens. Okay, so I've got you guys zoomed in a little bit on the fuel pressure regulator. I'm going to go ahead and fire the truck up and then come over here and make some adjustments and set the fuel pressure to, I think it was around 60 before, which seemed a little high. So like 50, 55, 60, wherever it runs happy. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go start the truck and then I'll show you how you do that. running you guys can't really see but it's sitting at about 40 which is fine for you know just stock regular um, so we're gonna go ahead and pump a little more into it I'll see if I can find somewhere I can set you guys down because the truck vibrates way too much
anyone interested in what the fuel pressure regulator does, basically all it's doing is it's using this to stop fuel from going all the way through the system and back to the tank, and therefore it's basically overdriving the fuel injectors. So whenever boost comes into the top of the thing and it's pushing this down, it's preventing the fuel from getting back into the return line, therefore holding the fuel, the pump keeps pumping into the fuel rails, and it's pushing more into the cylinders through the injectors. So it's overdriving the injectors. Not exactly the right way to do it, but it works fine. It seems to work fine. It's working better now that, you know, I guess this is out of there. But that's all that's doing. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you were curious about, you know, rebuilding fuel pressure regulators, there you go. That's how you do it with the with the air motive clones. So yeah, I mean I recommend it. It seemed to work just fine. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.